What is central banking? Let's find out. We've all heard of the US Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Australia, for example. All of these are central banks. But what exactly do these banks do? While the remit of each central bank is slightly different, they generally have the following three responsibilities in common. Firstly, they play a role in regulating the commercial banking sector. Secondly, they provide commodity and foreign exchange banking facilities for the government of a country. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, they are in charge of the implementation of the country's monetary policy to ensure the country's economy remains healthy and those in the population that want a job are able to get one. Let's go through these items one at a time. Regulating the financial sector. Commercial banks are constantly moving money around. By way of example, imagine that a power station pays one of its workers for a day's work. Money will leave the power station's bank account and get moved to the employee's bank account. Now, sometimes these bank accounts are at the same bank, but more often they are at different banks. When the employee goes to the grocery store and pays for his groceries, money will move around once again. This time the money leaves the employee's bank account and moves to the store's bank account. The grocery store then uses some of this money to pay one of its employees, who then in turn uses this money to pay the power station for his electricity bill. You can easily see how necessary it is that the banks ensure their payments come in on time so they can move the money on once again to the next destination. Any hiccup in this process would lead to a problem with the following payment and the whole process could break down, potentially leading to the collapse of a bank. One bank collapse could easily lead to another bank that was owed money by the original bank also collapsing and soon the whole sector could stop working. As most businesses and consumers store their money in bank accounts, a widespread collapse would prevent everyone being able to access their money and would cause untold chaos. A meltdown in the financial sector would have significant ramifications across all households and companies in the developed world and was a very real danger in the global financial crisis of 2008. Most central banks are tasked with regulating their financial sector to minimise the risk of a banking failure. This often includes setting and enforcing the rules within the industry and investigating fraud or bad behaviour. A meltdown in the financial sector would have significant ramifications across all households and companies in the developed world and was a very real danger in the global financial crisis of 2008. External events like wars, natural disasters, new technology for example, can impact the speed of growth in an economy. In order to ensure growth remains steady while unemployment is minimised, the central bank will sometimes want to help an underutilised economy grow more quickly. Most central banks are tasked with regulating their financial sector to minimise the risk of a banking failure. This often includes setting and enforcing the rules within the industry and investigating fraud or bad behaviour. If the level of the home currency is considered to be too high, the central bank will do the reverse of the previous example. It will sell its own currency and buy gold or foreign currency. This should push the domestic currency's price lower. Implementing the country's monetary policy. One of the key roles a central bank plays is to manage the aggregate economy to ensure low unemployment and stable growth, i.e. price rises, otherwise known as inflation, are positive but low, generally around 2% for a developed market like the US or most of Europe, perhaps around 5% for a developing market economy like China. External events like wars, natural disasters, new technology for example, can impact the speed of growth in an economy. In order to ensure growth remains steady while unemployment is minimised, the central bank will sometimes want to help an underutilised economy grow more quickly. The central bank may alternatively seek to slow down the economy if it is growing at a rate that is unsustainable, fearful that overexpansion could lead to a prolonged period of recession. The central bank can speed up or slow down the economy using what is known as monetary policy. The commercial banking sector can do one of two things with its excess money. It can either place it in an account with the central bank and earn some interest, 
or it can lend the money out to a person or business, perhaps to buy a house or a new piece of machinery. A central bank cannot go bankrupt because it controls the money supply and thus can print more money whenever needed. Therefore, loaning money to the central bank is largely risk-free. Loaning money to a homeowner or a business, however, is not risk-free as there is the chance the borrower may not be able to repay the loan. To compensate for this higher risk, a commercial bank will require a higher return from a loan to an individual or a business than it would from a loan or deposit it places with a central bank. The commercial bank may be able to earn a 2% return on any money deposited with the central bank. However, that same commercial bank may be able to charge a 5% return lending money to a business. If the commercial bank feels this higher level of return, in this case a 3% premium over the central bank rate, adequately compensates it for the risk of the business not being able to repay the loan, it will be more profitable for the commercial bank to lend the money to the business rather than deposit it with the central bank. Now, imagine that the central bank increases the interest rate it offers on deposits to 5%. In order to remain compensated for the risk of lending to a business, the commercial bank will now have to apply the 3% premium on top of the 5% and thus charge 8% for that business loan. You can see that the central bank, by changing their interest rate, causes the whole banking sector to change the interest rates they use. The firm that was willing to borrow from the commercial bank at 5% may choose not to do so if the rate rises to 8%. Business opportunities that were expected to be profitable at the lower rate will look less attractive at the higher rate. If the economy is growing too slowly, the central bank will cut interest rates. This will then lead to the commercial banks reducing their rates and thus allow borrowers access to cheaper loans to perhaps start new businesses or build new manufacturing plants. This in turn will lead to more economic growth, employment and a healthier economy. Conversely, if the economy is growing too quickly, and thus the central bank is concerned the economy may be coming unstable, the central bank will raise interest rates. Commercial banks will follow and raise the rates they charge, thus making it more expensive for borrowers and perhaps causing them to only build one new factory rather than two. This should lead to a more sustainable level of growth in the economy. Note that while the central bank does control short-term interest rates, the levels of those rates are generally determined by the state of the economy. A struggling economy will force the central bank to lower rates, while an overheating economy will cause the central bank to increase rates. And now for one important note. Most central banks are independent of their government. In the past, having government-controlled central banks allowed an out-of-favour government to attempt to win votes by cutting interest rates in order to boost an economy in the short term, pleasing workers and thus getting the politicians re-elected. The central bank may alternatively seek to slow down the economy if it is growing at a rate that is unsustainable, fearful that overexpansion could lead to a prolonged period of recession. The central bank can speed up or slow down the economy using what is known. The commercial banking sector can do one of two things with its excess money. It can either place it in an account with the central bank and earn some interest, or it can lend the money out to a person or business, perhaps to buy a house or a new piece of machinery.